welcome back to the Geek and Dad podcast. My name is Kyle Johnson and I am your host for today's show. And in this episode, I sit down across the table from Destin Sandlin of Smart Every Day. We have a cup of coffee, talk fatherhood, and how his YouTube channel, Smart Every Day, influences his parenting. Destin just so happened to be in Houston area for a work project, and I was lucky enough to catch up with him in person for this conversation. Today we learn a little bit more about the backwards bicycle, Destin's key to maintaining a work, life, and content creator balance, and what we both think is the most important role we have as fathers. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this conversation with Destin Salen of Smarter Every Day. Welcome back, everybody, to the Geek and Dad podcast. Today, I have a first. So the first uh, is obviously the fact that Destin and I are sitting here in person having a conversation while he's in Houston for work. So before we get into everything else, let's just get it out of the way. Why are you here in Houston instead of Alabama? I'm in Houston for my day job. I work for the Army. uh, Here, I can show you my, uh, my badge. Here, I'll bring it over to you. This is a this is a, a badge I have. It's a, a place called the Army Test Evaluation Command. I'm a flight test engineer. That's neat. The motto for the organization is just truth, simply truth. I think that's so cool. Yeah, that's neat? pretty fitting for you, given your YouTube career as well. Yeah, isn't that a cool patch though? Like that's it's got a, a neat sword patch. on it. I like it. We'll have to get pictures of that to show off too. Yeah, it's cool. So you're here for work, the normal work. Not here for the astronaut bit, which you have applied for. Oh, yeah. I think you have to apply to be an astronaut, right? I mean, you if to. you're a rocket scientist in some shape, form, or fashion, I guess it would make sense that you would apply to be an astronaut. It's a dream, man. You've got you've got to pursue your dreams, and uh, it's my dream to be an astronaut. So I would be a fool if I didn't pursue that, right? Absolutely. So, so you're here away from family, so let's go ahead and get the quick rundown of... We've already told people what the nine to five is. So the quick rundown of family. Oh wait, hold on. Let, let me do it this way. This is the Geek and Dad podcast, right? That it is. So you're a dad. I but am. Don't act like we know each other very well because we don't. Sure. You're Kyle. But that's okay. You're Kyle. Yeah. What's your last name, Kyle? Johnston. Johnston. Okay. I'm Destin, and you have how many kids? I have two kids. I have a two and a half year old and a two month old. Two and a half and two month. Okay. I have four. Um, I have what we call bookend girls. Nice. So we've got a 10-year-old girl. We have a 7-year-old boy. Well, I say she's 10. She's almost 10. Close He's enough. 7, almost 8, uh, your boy. We have a 4-year-old boy, and I have a, a daughter that's 1. Well, I remember uh, one of the coolest compliments. I'm going to say it's a compliment for the relationship my wife and I have. My wife's name is Tara. After the birth of our third child, I believe it was, and um, she comes in, and she talks to us, and we're getting ready and trying to figure everything out. And she just looks at us and says, "You two have been married for two hundred years, haven't you?" <laughs> just because we were, you know, we were in the moment, we were together, and all that stuff. And it was just, it was just really, it was really cool. It was really cool because I think that's what, um, that's what a, a child can do for a relationship. And it's not just the the birth process; it's it's the adoption process, it's the foster dad process, mm-hmm. it's all of these things. I mean, I think I think dadding is a is a super interesting thing, and some of us were you know fortunate enough to be able to be slowly eased into it. And some people are just like commando dads that can just jump in with both feet and just take over the situation. And I think that's awesome. It I, I sometimes think that foster parents are in many ways far and above more impressive than I will ever be as a normal parent having raise my children from day zero on just because they get thrown into such interesting unique and oftentimes challenging situations to never know what the future holds and not know where the future not know what the past was either dad means a lot right it is and that's that's why i am here because there is just so much that goes into it i've only got a two and a half year old so i've only got two and a half years of experience i've got friends who their oldest is I don't know how old she is. She's ten, I guess. This is t- I should know how old she is, but I, I doesn't this matter. Is terrible. <laughs> but she's like ten, and they've got five too, and five of their own. And it's just like, I see what struggles I face. I see what struggles they face. I get like soft practice with them for my kids, and it's just an ever evolving thing. And so, 
So what, yeah. what's the deal? Why are you why are you doing this podcast? Straight up, well, you, you're calling it Geek and Dad. Mm-hmm. You didn't call it Geek and Kyle. No, you called it Geek and Dad. Yeah. So what is it that you want? What what is what is the thing? Like, give me one sentence. What is it that you want out of this podcast? So for me, the one thing that I want out of this podcast is for other dads who are either avid gamers, tabletop players, nerds in any space, or geeks in any way who grew up. A lot like me where their passions weren't the standards. Even though I was the high school athlete, I was that guy in high school who all sang the national anthem before kickoff. Yep. And so there's that aspect of the nerd, and the nerd's always been there. And with parenting being as challenging as it is, and with being nerds can be even more challenging, even though it's slowly becoming more quote-unquote acceptable to be someone who plays video games for a living or talks about superhero movies for a living or comics for a living, even though it's slowly becoming more acceptable, it's still a challenge. And so my goal is to bridge the gap between myself personally and anybody else out there who has the same passions to other dads who have their own nerdy passions but are still dads at the end of the day. You with the astronaut bit, that is pretty nerdy when we get down to the nuts and bolts of it. Smarter Every Day is pretty nerdy when we get down to the nuts and bolts of it. Because you go through and you break up the science of everything. But there's a connection between what you do on the on your channel and how you raise your kids. Because you're going through and you're learning how these how these different things work when you got to work with the slow-mo guys in ballistics underwater. Or when you do the reverse bike with your son and how he was able to in a, in a short time span pick up the reverse bicycle. I mean, you're taking these That was concepts. about more than just a bicycle, by the way. Yes. That was about... How the... Well, it was that, but there was a, a thing that happened between me and my son. It was about him understanding that you can try something that seems impossible, and you can figure it out, and you can do it. And so that was a huge moment for us. hmm Because he knew it was hard, but he also knew he was going to figure it out. hmm And the way he knew that is he saw me fall off that bike. Yeah, hundreds of times as well, and he just bested me. You know, he did way better than I did, and and that's what I want for my kids. I want them to always be better than me, right? Mm-hmm. That's that's the goal is to have your children pass you. Yeah, and so I don't know. I think one of the main goals I have for Smarter Every Day is I I feel like authentic fatherhood can cure a lot of the ills of the world. Absolutely, right? And so, um, like, parenting is so important, and it. I'm, I'm not saying that dads are the answer, but I'm saying that act of shepherding a, a child. There's a mm-hmm. if, you, if you read Ted Tripp's book, Shepherding a Child's Heart. I have not. Okay, there's a. It's like this. If you want to, if you want to modify the behavior of a child, right? There's several ways you can do that. Mm-hmm. You can modify the behavior by discipline, whether that's corporal in the form of spanking or whether that's you know timeout or whatever you choose to mm-hmm. uh, do to uh, you know help your child do the right things. That's one way you can do it by just straight up addressing the behavior. Another thing you can do, according to Ted Tripp's book, is shepherd the heart, and it's basically getting to the root cause because we're all you know to use churchy language we're all sinners. Yep. And we're all depraved little rotten people. Mm -hmm. So to try to address that part of the heart that's doing those things, that's that's getting to the source of the matter. So this book, Shepherding a Child's Heart, is all about, okay, so Johnny, you know, threw a ball and hit his sister in the face. Why did he do that? You know, is it because he wanted to be funny? Is it because he doesn't value his sister as a completely different person that has feelings like he does? What is the deal here? Because there's an underlying heart issue. Mm -hmm. And so I think authentic fatherhood is about doing that, figuring out how to modify the heart of the child by helping them to see the own flaws of their own heart, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. As we try to see flaws in ours. Exactly. Because, you know, I have a pretty flawed heart. I don't know about you, but... Uh, Yes, I think that, um, like, for example, as a comic book reader, I find all the time different little bits of dialogue that I'm just like, okay, I don't know that you meant to speak to me in this way in particular, but you struck a chord with me on something that I've been dealing with with my daughter or something I've been dealing with with my wife. 
and finding the ways and so geek and dad exists to find ways to take those ways that we find the things that just speak to us and then turn them around and communicate them again and uh-huh. figure out how to communicate them with our kids gotcha. but then the other part of fatherhood is also the provider aspect and the balance that it takes to do the provider as well as the shepherding. And so I'm curious how how you balance and what your struggle is when you're balancing being gone from the family so long, like you are right now. Right. And versus when you get home but you still have to go back to work, or if you're neck deep in a project for smarter every day, what how do you manage and maintain that balance of not falling too far too long one way or the other yeah i mean you've actually hit me in a really interesting time i'm you know i am one weekend right now right so like the last time i kissed my children was a week ago yeah and so um you know you start to hurt Mm -hmm. i i start to hurt like you you look over there i bought rubber band guns for the kids pretty cool by the way did you see them i saw you when i walked in yeah they're pretty cool and so um you know I think that's me trying to cope with the fact that I'm not there with my children. Mm-hmm. I didn't get to go to my daughter's soccer game today, stuff like that. And so it hurts. It mm-hmm. hurts me. So, yeah, um, I'm not good at it. I'm not good at this part of it. So I have Smarter Every Day. I have, uh, you know, that, that probably takes 20 hours a week on, on weeks that I don't release a video. Um, 60, no, no, I'd say 40 hours a week on, maybe not. Maybe one more like thirty hours a week on weeks where I do release a video. It's a lot more than I thought it would be. It's a lot. I don't sleep much. I I don't know how you would be able to otherwise. Yeah, yeah, I don't sleep much. <laughs> um, I've slept about five hours every night this this week, but it's just because work. We, this was the craziest like real job work schedule I've had in a really long time. We've been yeah. doing twelve twelve hour days every day. We did it sixteen earlier this week it's been a long time since i did a 16 hour day and that's it makes me sad (laughs) but but it hurts (laughs) yeah it does but at the same time i feel like what we're doing is important so it's worth it so um i think it all comes back to my wife um my wife has the fantastic ability of keeping me grounded and um she is really really good at recognizing when i'm letting things get out of control because I'm, I'm hyper-focused on something I shouldn't be. You know, she's my helpmate. And that's those are her words, not mine. And so um, she even signs emails like that. She, she is an amazing person that um, the, the sum of the... You know, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. It really is. Um, so yeah, Tara, Tara knows how to communicate with me. And she knows when I'm letting the work-life balance get out of control... And um, this year I've made a conscious effort, not like a New Year's resolution or anything. It's just something I've been doing. I've made a conscious effort to pour into the family more. And so um, I hired a person to help me edit um, some of the videos. And so um, so what he'll do is I'll give him the rough the rough footage and he'll get me to like, you know, sometimes a 60% edit. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, that just shows me where all the good clips are, and I can go back in and form the story uh, if there's not a story there. Mm-hmm. Sometimes he can get it pretty far. And uh, it's trying to buy back some of the time with my family. And so it's the most precious commodity, really. I was talking to somebody today. And it's like, you know, my kids are not going to be kids very long. I got a text from my daughter today. I'm actually going to show you this. Um, she took my wife's phone. And she sent me a, a text that, that said, uh, let me see, it said, Daddy, I drew a picture of Reepa Cheep. She knows I like Reepa Cheep from Chronicles of Narnia. And I said, can I see it? He's my favorite. What did you draw it with? And she said, a pencil. And then she sent me a picture of Reepa Cheep. That's awesome. And so, That's a good little picture. Yeah, it's pretty fun. And then she sent me the, the, little, the little mouse emoji, which I thought was clever. And so that, like, just destroyed my heart because um, my daughter, my oldest daughter, doesn't really, she's not very affectionate. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she's not a, a hugger very much, mm-hmm. which I, I am very, I'm a very affectionate person. Mm-hmm. Um, and so for her to call me daddy and, like, seek out that was really big for me. Yeah. And so that tells me that, that tells me I'm not doing a good job right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that, and yeah. I you know I had a conversation with my kids before I left this time around. So, 
the work life balance is really hard. You know, I, I try to live my life, God, family, work in that order. I don't always do that. Mm-hmm. I always, you know, always try to work to live, not live to work. Yep. And sometimes, like for example, smarter every day. If an opportunity comes up to go do something really amazing somewhere, like interview the president, that enhances the live part, <laughs> right? That's pretty freaking cool. <laughs> it was it was nice. It was really fun. It, but if if I don't know, it's very it's very easy for me to let work spiral out of control, and my wife will be very blunt with me in mm-hmm. a very loving, patient, long-suffering way and just tell me. So I don't know what my life would be like without her. How long do you think it'll be before you're able to take some of the kids on some of these awesome trips that you get to do? Like oh, we've already done it. Oh, yeah. We've already done it. And so um, we we had an opportunity, you know, the backwards bike thing. My son went to Australia with us, mm-hmm. and, you know, he got to meet um, an astronaut, Chris mm-hmm. Hadfield. That was great. Um, and then later on, I got invited to speak at um, a school in Hawaii, Kamehameha um, School in Hawaii. I was just, they they said, will you come speak at our teacher conference for the whole, you know, it's a, it's an interesting school system they have there. But they said, would you come speak at our, you know, our statewide function? I was like, yes. Because <laughs> they said, well, we'll, you know, we'll pay for you to come over, which was enough to bring my, my daughters and my wife over. Mm-hmm. And so things like that, if I can ever combine the two and give my children a life experience that I think is value added then we try to do it, you know, and that's, you know, that's, that's what we try to do. I always try to, to set it up so that whatever we're doing is a net positive on the family Mm -hmm. instead of a negative. I'm talking too much. No, 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 no. That's great. I, you, if you're talking too much, I'm doing something right. Okay. That's the way I see it. (laughs) It's clever. Um, so so continuing on that line, do y'all homeschool or do y'all do public school, private? We do a hybrid system. Okay. Okay. Are you familiar with classical education? Uh, yes, CE. Okay. Yes. Um, well, we do a hybrid where the first few years, it's it's pure homeschool. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, that's not true. There's a couple of days a week of actual go to school school, and then the rest of it is seat work at the house with yeah. my, my wife. My wife has a uh, a master's degree in child development, and so oh, wow. okay. she's she's a clever girl, and so she she sought out all the schools in like a huge 200 mile radius area and like we've got a you know education is huge to us and so we found this particular school situation and we really enjoy it and Mm -hmm. it's very uh very uh parent intensive like i i go up to um a a father work day you know Mm -hmm. several times a year and Mm -hmm. so we go and we we fix the school there's no paid janitor there Mm -hmm. the mother's you know, sometimes the fathers will go do a work day a week, mm-hmm. and so it's it, it's interesting because what that does is that that required buy in by the parents that, that that means you know that your children are you know they're going to school with other children who are parented intentionally. Yeah, if that makes any sense, it, not, it makes exact sense. Yes. Yeah, and it's a it's a very it's a very hardcore thing. We, uh, you know, it takes a lot of time. We drive a long way to go to it, but we feel like it's worth it. So it's it's a it's a classical education. Mm-hmm. Type yeah, situation. schooling is actually one of those things that uh, I didn't realize it was on my radar until it just sort of started coming up in conversations, and then now it's like seriously on my radar. Because mm-hmm. even though my daughter's only two and a half, that's school's not that far off. No, no, it's, it's not. not. Now, the school district that you guys are in, have you, have you thought about it? A little bit. It's interesting. Um, so my friends who have five kids, they homeschool. My That's an awesome mother or father, whoever does the homeschooling. The mama. She's uh, a beast. That's, a, <laughs> that's, that's amazing. I mean, she's a beast. Let's I'll put it like the way it is. She's a beast. And um, my wife and their mother, who uh-huh. are best friends... They went through high school in the same homeschooling program together, and um, what's it called? At the time, it was called Logos, I believe. Yep, yep. Um, but what I find interesting, and the part that has me, the part that has me the most concern is also the part that gives me the most confidence, and that is that um, 
my wife and her friend didn't necessarily get the most value out of it, but I don't think there was as much buy-in from the parent perspective to reinforce that buy-in from the student perspective, from their perspective. Right. Right. Whereas you have something like a CE, a classical education, where the buy-in from the parents, it is a legitimate buy-in. Dude, and the opportunity is... cost is so high. Yeah. It's so high. It would be so easy to um, send our kids to, well, you know, I, I'm i a product of the public school system, so I'm not going to... I am too. I'm not going to knock it at all, actually, now that I think yeah. about that. I guess what I'm just saying is that's just a lament of my heart there for how much time we yeah. put into it. And I regret that I can't put in more because my mm-hmm. wife my wife definitely does the heavy lift there. Yeah. But I hear people knocking public school a lot, and um, I never join in those conversations. And and I have a hard time doing it too as well because it's one of those things that, I mean, I, I, I came out and... You were public school? I was. I was too. And, and sure, I didn't do as well as I could have because I got lazy my senior year. And so I didn't do as well as I could, but I, I realized that, um, I think I think the important thing that I've realized as I've had these conversations is that more than anything else, it's not, it's not necessarily the system, but it's the buy-in of the parents that makes or breaks the value of whatever system you choose, be it public, private, yeah, I would agree with that. homeschool, or whatever. I would and agree so, with that. Uh, I just find it interesting that you're you're doing the CE and the split and stuff. Um, so folding into the uh, the pouring into each other and being intentional with all the time that you spend. So how much what what portion of a normal day is spent as a family unit, or is there any particular portion of the day spent as a family unit? intentionally before everybody kind of rolls into the rest of their evening routines we try to eat together at mm-hmm. night we, we do our best to do that mm-hmm. um my wife does a great job of you know trying to um make that happen mm-hmm. it's not cooking every night mm-hmm. because that's unreasonable to expect someone it can to be hard yeah. yeah um we we just try to figure out how to do that mm-hmm. we we order more Chinese food now than we have a great Chinese food in our, in our town. It's mm-hmm. awesome, and so we order more Chinese food, do stuff like that because it's easy and it lets us just have time. Um, but we're not always able to do that, mm-hmm. and so you know it's a lot of run and gun sometimes. Yeah. But that's probably the biggest family time we have. Every once in a while, I do something called a family fun day, mm-hmm. where I will just uh, say, "We're doing this today." And it's usually on a Saturday, yeah. and it's uh, they're like, what, "What's Family Fun Day today?" And I'm like, I don't know. There's a there's a museum called the McWayne Center in Birmingham. It's a really cool science museum. Mm-hmm. We'll do that. Um, I guess it was two weekends ago. I took him to the Nashville Zoo. Fun. Yeah, it's just me and four kids. Nashville Zoo. It was awesome. And so, how far is Nashville? It's about an hour and a half from where we're at. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's cool. So, you know, my wife got a day to herself. We got fan, you know, daddy fun that. day. It was good. It was really fun. So, I don't know. My kids are at a really fun age right now. That yeah. We we can you know I can mobile assault dad. It's re- very difficult, but I can take the rocket van out and we can do it. But it's it's a it's a challenge. So before we go, we've talked about it a few times. I did want to go ahead and get you to explain the backwards bicycle because we've brought it up a few times. Okay. And if people haven't seen. The, the myriad of videos that are on YouTube about this bicycle, if they haven't seen you offering people on stage $100 if they can get it, when your son just does it in front of everybody else, if they haven't seen these videos, uh, go ahead and explain what this is and what the lesson was from the father perspective, which you already touched on, but also from the science perspective, because I think it's really neat and I think they tie in together really well. Yeah, so... Um... So there was this welder. His name's Barney. I've worked with Barney for for years. We've for, we've you know I'm an engineer. Barney's a welder. We work together a lot. And um, usually, you know, an engineer will will hand a welder a print and and he'll make it and that's it. Barney's smarter than me on a lot of things. And so I just go to Barney and I say, Hey Barney, I'm thinking about this. What do you think about that? And then we'll just you know chew the fat on it for a while. And then we'll usually arrive at a much better solution because two brains is better or better than one. So um, Barney called me on the phone, and he said, Hey, Destin, come on down here to the shop and ride this bicycle I made. 
And I was like, all right, Barney, whatever. Sounds weird, but I'll be there in a minute. Because, you know, he's a smart dude. I go down there. And he goes, there it is. Hop on it, boy. And so I get on the bike. And I was like, what have you done? And I turn the steering wheel. I'm like, oh, my gosh. He has reversed the steering. If I turn the handlebar to the right, it goes, the wheel goes to the left and vice versa. He goes, why don't you show me? You're a smart boy. you educated, right? Why don't you hop on that thing and ride it? And say, all right, Barney, here we go. And so I started trying to ride it, and I could not ride it. I'm, I'm not talking like, you know, I was just wobbly. Could not go two feet. Mm-hmm. Literally, two feet. One revolution of the, of the wheels. And I said, good grief. Okay, I understand the system. I understand the, the mechanical system. I understand the gears on a very deep level. All this stuff. But I can't make it work. Why can't I make it work? And then Barney and Kyle, another welder, were just sitting there drinking coffee and laughing their heads off. And I got frustrated in a way that I have not been frustrated in a really, really long time. And I realized at that moment that my brain was getting in the way of my brain. Mm -hmm. Like, big time. Mm -hmm. And so um, that frustrated me. The thought that I could be the problem. You know, it was it was very humbling, and then all of a sudden, all these things started coming up. It's like if I could be wrong about how a bicycle works, you know, just this bicycle, and I, I couldn't overcome just a small change in the system. What does that say about every cognitive bias I have? Now, I, I understand this is a muscle memory thing, and and so being on the bike, you know, has nothing to do with like all these other things and beliefs I have, but. But dead gum, man, I couldn't ride this bike. And so, and it was my brain's fault. And so I decided at that moment I was going to ride the bike. It was going to happen. And so I asked Barney to build me a version of the bike, which he did. And I started riding it. And I would get at the top of the driveway and ride all the way down to the bottom of the driveway, falling, you know, dozens of times and ride all the way back. I do that once a day for about eight months. Now, I didn't try it every single day, hardcore. I just hopped on it and just went down, came back, you know, when I was driving from work. So it took a really long time. Eight months is a long time. It's a long time. It really is. And so um, anyway, I eventually got there. There There was a click moment, and all of a sudden I could do it. And I I didn't do anything else. I did it like that for a year and a half. And then when I tried to flip back and ride another bicycle, I did it at a, a talk I gave at a, a conference called Skepticon. I, I tried to do it on stage. I could not ride a normal bike. And so I flipped my cognitive bias or my you know, muscle memory bias, whatever you want to call it. So anyway, this was a big eye-opening thing for me. I mean, it was huge because I could change my cognitive bias. So if I could screw up about a bicycle, what does that mean about my parenting style? Mm-hmm. Right? So if, if, I, if I think, okay, this child, you know, my oldest child, this is the discipline form that works for her, or this is the way that I should express love to her, or this is X, Y, Z, I kind of get in a pattern with that. So when it comes up to the next kid, I try those same things. They don't work. And so it's really something you have to stay on top of and try to get to truth. Looking back at my patch here, you have to get to truth as quickly as you can. And it's not about doing what you think is right. It's about doing what's actually right. Mm -hmm. And that's really hard to figure out. Mm -hmm. Anyway, a couple of notes about the backwards bike thing. My son was able to do it in just a matter of weeks. He got out there and he just did it. You know, Mm -hmm. and I would say, hey, why don't you give up? You know, other little boys can't do this. Why don't you just give up? Just messing around with him. He was like, no, I'm going to do it, Daddy. And he he figured it out. It was pretty awesome. Um, So one thing that was interesting about the bike experience is because I didn't start and not stop till I learned it, I just did this little down and back of the driveway every day, it took me a really long time. And so I wanted to understand if I kind of messed that up, if it could be done a lot faster than that. So I sent a bike to a guy on the internet, his name is Mike Boyd, and he just learns new skills. And I sent him the bike and I said, Mike, please try to learn how to ride the bike and don't stop until you learn it. And he was able to do it in about four hours. Wow. Yeah. And so he was 25. I'm 34. I think it was around 31 at the time I did this. And so I found that the younger you are, the quicker you can learn the bike, which I think correlates to other things in our life. The younger that you yeah. are, you know, would you agree? I, I think I would. Well, I want to thank you a ton for cool. your time, man. 
it's an honor. It was fun. Awesome I, to meet you in person. Dude. I think I think it's really good that you're trying to you know bring positive whatever you want to. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think you're on a mission or anything. It's just like you're just being a dad. I think yeah. just being a dad's cool. And just yeah. saying, hey, this is a you know this is a major <clears throat> part of my life. I want to say thank you again to Destin for his time, especially since it was in the middle of a brutal work schedule for him while he was here in Houston. For links and show notes, you can find them on the website, www.geekanddad.com forward slash podcast. And you can find Destin's launch pad online at smarteveryday.com, which will take you to all of his online stuff, including social media and YouTube. I want to thank everyone for listening today. If you have any feedback for me, let me know via review. You can leave me a comment or you can hit me up on Twitter at Geek and Dad, on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Geek and Dad, or email me, Kyle at GeekandDad.com. I'm always open for review, for comments, for ways to improve what you liked and what you didn't like, so definitely hit me up. That being said, I hope you all have a wonderful week, and until next time, geek on. <laughs>